You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 424. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. We really do, even though the desk is messy. But if you're wondering what's on the desk, you should probably check us out on YouTube and become a subscriber. Yeah, please. And subscribe to the podcast. We would dig that very much, and many of you have. And for that, we thank you, and we especially thank you guys who have done reviews for us, yes, whether it be on thank iTunes, you. Thank you, thank you, Stitcher, thank you, thank you. we want to know what you think. We listen, we we read those things. Yeah. Thanks to everyone too who's posting like, hey, the, the 107 study guide got me through the test. Oh. I know it's funny though, some people post that in the community. None of them post it on their personal page, like, hey, thanks to Drone You, even though no one outside of the Drone You community will see that. So if you guys are saying thank you, yeah, Please say thank you on your personal page. And not <laughs> we in appreciate the thank you, <laughs> yes. no matter. But yeah, it's it's nice if uh, if you're willing to do that personally on your on your stuff that other people will see. Yeah, no, I think and that we is. appreciate it either way. Uh, today, though, we're going to be talking about something that uh, we have been asked this question time and time again, and we have not answered it. And today we're going to explain why we are not going to answer this question. Uh, we'll play the question for you. I'll give you alternatives to why I won't tell you the answer to the question um, in hopes that it'll help you. Um, if you really want an answer to this question, though, you've got to become a member because I, I'm just not going to give this information out. So uh, it, I think it could be, you know, dangerous, Rob. Yeah, we're, as we've said many times before, we're all about responsible flight, flying safely, making sure people are doing things the right way, and to give this kind of information out would not be consistent with that philosophy. Correct. So. And I'm also not trying to brown nose anyone who listens to our podcast like you at the FAA. <laughs> Okay. We're I doing think this you week. would probably never be accused of brown nosing the FAA. I mm. think that's pretty fair to say. Yeah. Well, we know a lot of federal agencies watch this podcast, and that's a, that's great. The fact that they're saying, you know, <laughs> power on is probably good. Yeah, um, for sure. But I just want to make it clear that we are not we are not talking about this to make them happy. We're talking about this because there's a genuine concern, and uh, we want to do the right thing. So absolutely, play the question. Hey guys, Danny Davis here from Kentucky. Um, I'm checking in with you today because i got a good question for you. Um, I'm asking you about geofencing. Um, I had a, um, a Phantom uh, Vision 2 Plus, upgraded that to a um, GoPro 4 a Phantom 2, uh, and then just recently I purchased uh, a Phantom 4, so I skipped over the uh, Phantom 3 and the, and the Professional uh, Phantom 3. Uh, so I'm just now learning about geofencing. Um, now here's my question and my uh, my problem. I've got a couple clients that live close to two different airports. Uh, one is, well, they're actually they're both non-towered, uh, but uh, they um, one of them closes at five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, period. And, and but anyway, you can't fly with a geofencing uh, n- near those perimeters. Of course, as we know. Uh, but here's here's the big question. Um, I know the people at both of these airports, and they have given me clearance to fly in these zones, uh, provided that uh, we communicate, uh, and we know there's no uh, aircraft in the in the area uh, coming in on approach or leaving. Uh, and I have like five or six, uh, and possibly I know I have five, but I may have six or seven uh, potential paying customers. I cannot fly in these zones with this Phantom Four at all. Uh, it won't let me. Uh, it won't. It won't let me do anything at all. Of course, you know I can't take off, as you well know. But there's. Uh, is there any way that I can program in there? You know, I take full responsibility. Blah blah blah. You know, to be able to fly in these uh, in these zones because I do have approval to do it. Let me know what your thoughts are, guys. And I really appreciate your information. You are so helpful. So thanks for being there for us. Have a good day. So he's asking, he's got approval, he says, 
to fly at an airport. Well, we and is there any way to get around the geofencing? Yeah, number one, I assume, and, and I think it's safe to assume that, you know, he's being honest with us. And the way he's asking the question, I will I will give him credit that it seems like he intends to do things the right way. And, and interestingly, Paul, you could go fly with a Phantom 2, right? Oh, yeah. Because that's not going to have... The, so it's kind of... It's kind of goofy in the sense that with this one, you can't. But a lot of, of the new people don't know that. Well, I so. understand that. I understand that. But anyways, no one's going to go buy a Phantom 2 so they can go fly near an airport. I'm, it would be my my hunch. But as it relates to what you wanted to say about this, um, please take it away. Uh, well, first things first, um, DJI does say that if you do have um, approval to fly in those areas and you provide them with written permission from the airport manager, that they will uh, send you some sort of program that you okay. can put on the drone to get clearance. Um, they've also said that you know recently in the new firmware that you should be able to go in and tap and say, I have full responsibility, but I've heard both ways that even if you do that, it still doesn't let you fly within a certain distance of the airport. Airport. Um, and so the question becomes, is there a way to get around all of this? And the answer is yes. Um, but we here at DroneU are not going to give that information out. Uh, just very simply, because if I were to tell people who listen to this podcast, which has now been downloaded more than a quarter of a million times, um, if I tell people the information, like, here's how to get around geofencing, I'm not doing our community a service. Right. I, I'm not helping um, keep the infrastructure of the United States safe. Um, I am not uh, doing anything that would condone good behavior. I wish sure. our politicians thought the same way. But um, <laughs> uh, no, I, and I say that because, you know, if he does have written permission, which we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, he's got permission and, you know, get written permission, send it to DJI support. They will probably help you. Uh, they were very helpful to me. So that's the um, answer to the question, which I is a very fair answer. At the end of the day, they may not respond to you True. in time, which you should give them, you know, a week or two advance notice, you know, ask them for how to do this. But I'm not going, we're not going to sit here and say, this is how you get around it. Um, because there's I, a reason it's there. I don't want to incite violence. I don't want to incite um, opportunity for danger. I don't want to cause potential problems to man aircraft on the ground. I, you know, I just, I will not tell someone how to get around that. Right. That's fair. I think so, that's honorable. I've been asked uh, that question over a hundred times via email. And yeah. It's just not happening. No, they, the, that so, question comes in quite a bit. So yeah, sorry. It's kind of like it's not like the funnest thing to talk about. Like you know, hey, you know, how do you fly an airport and get around geofencing? Well, I'm not going to tell you. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and so a lot of other folks, like you've alluded to, certainly some of those questions have come in via email. But we've actually had people call in with that question to the Astro and you. Um, record a question site and we've we've not brought those up in the past but we figured you know what it's probably time to talk about and explain why we can't do that and, and I think people understand why and again I think somebody like Danny he's 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 looking for an answer of how to do it the right way yeah and I think you've given him that and so um, Danny go go down that road and, and hopefully you can get yourself in the position you need to be in there are flight controllers though that you can turn it off yeah. So uh, a lot of the bigger birds have that. So right. anyway, Anyways. we don't want to go there. Hopefully that made the FAA happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> gosh. But uh, please don't ask that question again. But if you've got another question, go to askgrownu.com, upload that question. We'll get right to it. And we are going to continue on the episode recording spree. By now, you've probably heard about the Inspire 2. You've probably heard about the Mavic uh, drone from DJI. You've probably heard about it all. Inner drone's done. You know, it's 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 over. But I'm kind of happy I'm not going to Inner drone this yeah? year. Yeah. It's just well, kind of nice to take a break. You're going to be in a, in a better place, I think. I think so, too. So On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, if you want to get your 107 license, you can. Just go to thedroneu.com. But that's it. That's all we're going to talk about. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.